requires a, sp- a special kind of uh, brain to enjoy and no no <laughs> yes and i feel slightly I, above room temperature toast Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how-tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. I'm Ben Stone here at LGC Actual Switch in the Bits in our little Linux-powered studio, joined every week by the man up north. That is one Jordan Huang. You know him, you love him. You might get enough of him. You never know, man. Most, most people have had their fill of me. I don't know, man. Pedro Mateus, staying Hello. up late past his bedtime on the Isle of Britannia. Together with you, Shot Realm Dynamic, watching us live here on Twitch, helping us form Cocaine Voltron. Two canes, best canes. I was just waiting for something to break that entire intro. I'm like, mm. <laughs> it's last bad happen, week, right? if, you, if you joined in the live show last week, it wasn't just a dumpster fire for four hours, man. It was, it was challenging. By the end of the show, I was switching the show with a mouse. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, it's it's been ten years, and things can still go wrong in new and exciting ways. No, <laughs> kidding. What's up? What's new? Uh, go back Wednesday if you want to hear or listen to the pre pre super shows, and you want to hear my adventure of trying to watch uh, Dragon Ball Super superheroes legally and pay them money to watch it, and like all the hoops I jumped through. I ended up watching it. For those of you at home who've seen it, man, I'm just gonna say Bulma, man. Okay. They didn't have, they okay, didn't have I, no I, business. They didn't have no right giving Bowman that dumb truck. Mm. <laughs> it's, yeah, a, it's, it's brought up super, during the movie. Superhero. Too. Yeah. yeah. I, I was like, I, I saw, I saw your note in the, in the, in the show notes. I'm like, is there like some kind of new SSH client that I don't know about? Are you like, <laughs> I, I realize that now that you've said Watching it. Watching yeah, <laughs> DBZ over SSH. Yeah. <laughs> like I, I, I thought it was like, Oh, you had to like set up some proxy or something. I'm just like, I, I've, I've been waiting for like two days to figure out like what the fuck DBZ SSH is. <laughs> I'm like, oh, oh, that makes it terrifying about a sense. Fuck. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. that yeah, D- <laughs> DBZ over SSH live. Uh, tune in the pre show if you want to listen to that. We solved all kinds of like weird problems and things along those lines, including fixing email. How mm-hmm. about you, Jordan? Uh, anything new in uh, croc technology? No, no, no new, no new croc developments. I'm working on my alligator cannon, but you'll you'll all get that inflicted on you later in the summer. Now it's uh, just been a lot of a lot of working this week. I got back from vacation, and it's like, hey, we didn't do anything the previous week, so now you have two weeks of work to do in one week. So mm. I got to blitz through that. Wow, I'm also at the start of my diet, so I'm just like super undercaloried and in a great mood all the time. Yeah, it's it fun. You found a good app though. I did uh, Waistline on Fdroid. Uh, if you're looking for a macro calorie counter app that is like completely offline, um, it does, it does have some integration for like a food database. So you can like scan barcodes if you don't want to like manually punch in all the, all the nutritional information for your food, which you can also still do. Um, but yeah, if you, if you don't want, uh, if you just want like a local one that, um, doesn't like send your information anywhere, uh, waistline on Fdroid. All right. Right up. The F, really tiny wires. The F stands for fuck. It's fuck droid. Uh. <laughs> Pedro, what is the latest and greatest in APB this week? Uh, that's the thing. Um, I got a little bit annoyed at APB. They finally ban you. Oh, did you find like <laughs> one weird ass side edge issue? Then you're like, you're dead to me. No, not this really. It's, un- it's still unplayable. the same issues that Gabe has uh, been uh, swirling the uh, proverbial drain for about 10 years. Uh, and uh, the the issues is uh, they're still the same. It's uh, the cheaters are rampant, and the matchmaking is completely fucked. Now, when so you you'll say have cheaters s- are rampant. Are we talking like Tarkov level? Like where you, you're uh, the only one not cheating? <laughs> there, there's there's the pr- there's the etiquette to follow if you can detect the other cheaters. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I don't know if I'm the only one not cheating, but they are rampant and they're very overt, and they don't get banned. Uh, but I. I'm still in the, I'm like good enough that I can just put up a fight, but the cheaters is like, okay, that guy's cheating. So I don't even care. Uh, it's the, um, the matchmaking that matches like fresh off the tutorial people against me or matching me against the people who have been playing that game for the past 10 years, not necessarily cheating, but they're just that good. And I don't even stand a chance. It's like, can I get someone who's like, you know, in the mid range, kind of like me, please. So no. uh, I spent Friday evening uh, instead of playing APB. I was I got um, 
insane and four by four Evo two working on uh, uh, with Lutris. It's like, oh, okay, I could just play these old games instead. That's cool. So that, that, that's what I did. Sounds amazing. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> what is the horse play? <laughs> the, the horse is playing Dragon Ball Z over SSH. Its port number is over 9,000. It's the Steam. Well, you know whose power level is over 3 million? It's, it's the Steam Deck. This is from omedia.tech.informa.com. That's a, that's a URL. So uh, we, have, uh, we have discovered that um, ac- uh, according to the, right, their uh, research. First one of the night. Yep. Uh, <laughs> co- according to uh, their, their research, the Steam Deck has moved approximately 3 million units um, after being uh, for sale for what, like the past two years now? Uh, in the a interest of comparison. What year and change? Yeah. yeah. So, um, year. So, like, yeah. One, one, what? It was February. So it's like, yeah, a year and a half. Uh, put it into perspective. Um, after about two years of GA, uh, the Xbox, uh, the newest Xbox, sold about twenty six unit million units by uh, end of twenty twenty two. I don't want to talk about the Switch numbers because we want to compare apples to origins, not uh, or origins, d- 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 not d- d- apples to. Hey, man, I looked them up for you. Don't worry. Okay. <laughs> sure. Um. Pff, yeah. The. Yeah, of, of course, the Switch has dominated that. It's like the best-selling console of all time. Yeah, let's Third. compare apples to oranges, not blue whales. Uh, and, I mean, you can also, like, walk into any drugstore and walk out with an Xbox. Um, so the Steam Deck's availability and, like, distribution channels were always going to hamstring it. But, like, 3 billion is still respectable as a result of, like, you had to wait several weeks after ordering it, at least from the initial outset. I mean, you did. I mean, they're, they're difficult to get hold to. And you know, like, here's the whole thing, though. Like I, I said, I dare say, uh, dedicated handhelds just for gaming have always been kind of a niche thing as opposed to like a multi-purpose device. And I think Andrew in our show notes, that's something you can do in our, if you're a patron. Uh, what, what's j- devices with Jellos? What's Jellos? That was a question for j- Jellyfish people. OS? I, I, don't, I don't know. know. He's like, they can be the best devices with Jell-O. So I'm not sure if the Steam oh, Deck uh, is the, niche, unless the Switch is also niche. Yeah, the the Switch is the third best-selling console, and the uh, second best-selling console is the 3DS, which is also G- a handheld. G-Loss, just Sorry, enough the Linux the OS. OS. <laughs> ah, okay. So, you know, here's the Deck is a bit more versatile than, like, even a Switch when you think about it, because you can do a lot more with it. I know you can do homebrew and all that other, if you got the right version of the Deck not deck uh, switch mm-hmm. but um i looked up the numbers the switch sold 2.74 million units now the first year it was out the first three months it was out oh uh, yeah here's the other thing though here's the other thing this this speaks to the popularity of the steam deck it's a hundred uh, it's a hundred dollars more than the switch mm-hmm like for the base unit, the one that you are like, eh, I don't know, maybe I want to get that one. I want to get the like better 64 one. gigs of internal EMMC storage. Yeah. Ugh. It's a glorified SD card. What do you think, Pedro? I have three million is not bad, especially considering it's a new platform from someone who <laughs> previously, when they tried to do the hardware thing, it didn't go so well. They didn't valve. Um, but no, I, I, I look forward because this is all, you know, speculation, uh, there, we don't know the numbers because valve doesn't share the numbers. So they're basically extrapolating from existing sales and comparing like week to week. Okay. This game, uh, was second place in the most sold. And this company said that they sold this many on Steam. It, it, so it was how they, uh, reverse engineered, like it based on Elden Ring sales, right? We talked yeah. about this a while ago. <laughs> And it's basically, okay, so if Valve is sorting that list via the amount of money that they got from the sales of that thing, then they can extrapolate how many decks were sold. So they're saying by the end of 2023, there will be over 3 million uh, decks sold, which, mm. you know, cool. That, that, that's very good to see. But yeah, no, it's uh, as a handheld, you, you either have a Nintendo badge on the back or... Yeah, <laughs> like I, I, I gotta wonder how much, how many units that new Zelda game and the new Mario game just shipped automatically just because yeah. of the inbuilt market for and that. Mario and it's the Kart. only place you can play those games, right? <laughs> like, so no. There, it, again, it's it's not a direct comparison. You can't. Yeah. So I, I think what was it last week? Maybe after the show, Asus 
was it asus that yes showed off their like prototype of april fool's thing and i've seen a couple mm-hmm. of other videos being made like this is going to compete with the steam deck which I, I forget who it was earlier this week brought it up in uh, our discord uh and i'm like not unless it's 399 i don't I mean, this is where the Steam Deck, yeah, $100 more in a Switch, but you can do a lot more in the Switch. This is, it's the smaller boutique, uh, uh, who's the company? Aya Neo. They make mm-hmm. those Windows deals. And those things are like seven, eight, nine hundred dollars $900, man. So I think that that's, the price is really a strong point with the Steam Deck. Now, to both of you, wouldn't you have thought by a year later, we would have seen some OEM... Like somebody w- would be making, we have Steam Deck at home that runs Steam OS. That w- that would have required Valve to release Steam OS, though. I think that that, have, that has been for <laughs> the Steam Deck, the Hollow ISO. Exists. Yeah, ho- ho- Hollow ISO is a is a community project that uh, that reverse engineers it. Which I mean, you know, by all means, they could have used. They could have been like, oh yeah, well, we'll 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 do that. Um, I know, I know, like certain a bunch of articles have brought up that like. Stuff, guys like Aya or the Ambernick or the other handheld PC manufacturers, they're in talks with Valve to have like Valve directly support the OS. Mm-hmm. Which, like, if you're making a product and you're not, you and you, it's 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 running software, right? Like, you're you're ultimately on the hook for that. Uh, letting Valve handle that, as you know, we're doing that for all of Linux gaming mm-hmm. now. I think is probably the the financially smart move for these companies. They could they could roll their own Linux, but then they gotta like worry about the hardware support. They gotta worry about the bugs, security updates, all that crap. Mm. I I just thought by now you'd be able to get one off the shelf because Valve was really big on like, hey, we want other people to make these. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That they did say that, but yeah, no, everyone's been just like, can you just release the ISO for SteamOS three, please? And they don't want to. (laughs) <laughs> and and uh, uh, to to Pedro's point, right? Like uh, they're saying, can um, that we want other people to release them? Remember the last time we asked people to release hardware for us? That went over well, swimmingly, right? <laughs> so yeah. what you're saying is Dell's hard at work on one, right? <laughs> Probably. And Falcon Northwest. No, they're making oh, that oh, controller yeah. oh, yeah. with it's, the two it's gonna be a <laughs> it, it, It's going to have like an onboard like like a, a a mobile 4070 or something and have like three minutes of battery life that's gonna no, be I think hilarious that, when we think about it like that though and that, that probably tells you how close to uh breaking even it is because mm-hmm. you know i'm thinking as like uh if i was going to make a steam deck it's like i can't make any money off that but like Val- valve is in a perfect position for that right like they like steam is kind of just printing money for them mm-hmm. uh re- re- like they they'll, they'll the be fine regardless of the success of failure of of the steam deck so yeah <laughs> they ho- they own steam so they can make you know the 30 percent of, of literally every game so they can afford to take the hit on the deck well I, I mean, it's, all... it's what it's what microsoft does that's what sony does with like yeah. being loss leaders right so. how about a little bit of leaked microsoft handheld stuff that came out this week yeah the the that's the other one that if you were on the internet at any point this week you probably saw that uh, a, an internal hackathon that was happening at microsoft uh, one of the teams was uh, developing a gamepad style UI for Windows, and uh, well, it it's not official. Uh, we don't know if it'll actually become a thing yet. But the uh, the talk did have you know a bit of a sprint uh, going on because of devices like the Steam Deck, uh, and that's that was the driving factor for the. Um, creating a specific UI for handhelds for Windows 11, which is, you know, interesting uh, to see Microsoft give a damn about gaming on Windows for the first time since the Xbox, you know, the well, first I, one. What are, you, what, are you, what are you talking about? Game Pass, man. <laughs> Xbox. Xbox. Game Pass no, for it's, PC. It's available on Windows, too. Well, here's the thing. I'm like Xbox, watching, I'm Game watching Pass. That's the, name the of it. Um, video that was posted on Twitter. All this is going to be in our show notes. It's like many elements of the Windows UI is not optimized for handhelds. Can't we just reinstall Windows 8? <laughs> oh, yes, the tablet That interface. wasn't even optimized for tablets, and boy, did what? they try. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I read through a little bit of this, and they're like, yeah, we have, like, keyboard stuff working. We've, we've mapped a bunch of the buttons and stuff to, to the controller, which, I mean, we would, there are projects on Linux that do that, too. This is bit, It's pretty bare bones, but, like, give me an embrace i I don't know i don't know i i'm not sure if anything will come out of it maybe we'll see an xbox handheld in the near future 
only the, the <laughs> do it Xbox. streaming only like the uh, the the PlayStation one that's supposedly coming or or the, Sony, that Logitech don't. one. Yeah, the Logitech yeah. one. <laughs> yeah, everyone's <laughs> salivating over that guy, right? Everyone's yeah. Android, you guys. I, I like to think that somebody at Logitech finally walked in and like, no. <laughs> Stop, just slapped it out of there. Yeah. Stop it. We're not doing that. Okay, man. you've had that run. You've seen how poorly it's done. Just drop it, <laughs> dude. Uh, Windows, maybe Windows. Microsoft's gonna. I mean, Microsoft makes hardware, but I mean, this this strikes me as like, if they do something like this, it'll end up in like the graveyard of like cool shit you find out that Microsoft made but never sold. Well, mm-hmm. it's like, like hell, even Zunes. Zunes were actually a pretty good music player. You only the 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 problem was you could only like load wind, uh, music through through like their their Zune mm-hmm. app, mm-hmm. and and yeah, and as as such, it got like fucking tossed to the side. I had a friend with a Zune. It was it was fine. It had, it was you could get like more storage on it for like the cheaper than the equivalent iPod, right? Like they were reasonably cheap, man. And yeah. like you had like Zune fanatics. I had a buddy. Uh, he'd bought like the Zune docking station stereo, man. Yeah. And he'd broke that I had to repair the trace on. <laughs> Yeah, like I don't, I don't know. It, Microsoft is like Google in that, like they'll take some swings with some cool ideas, and they'll be like, "Actually, no." Mm, fair. All right. Uh, something that Valve did earlier this week was kind of shocking. Well, not really. <laughs> not, not, not really. But it's, it's still, it's still pretty shitty. So, uh, Warlander. It's a free to play game. It has some suspicious anti cheat uh, technologies implemented, or so a review said. Stuff like um, it being it remaining on the system after you uninstall the game, performance issues, weird network hiccups, you know, all, all the stuff you want out of your anti-cheat software. So, uh, as, as mentioned, someone left a review. A bunch of people, 2,500 people, left, uh, left a uh, thumbs up on the review saying, yo, this, this, this was helpful. And, uh, but, and all of them uh, had their accounts restricted so that they can't vote or leave reviews anymore. So according, according to the developers, this was not their doing. They did not request Valve to do this, blah, blah, blah. The, they don't even have the capacity to do it. Um, and appa- apparently this is done via, via moderators. And Valve has a policy about doing this for basically any bad review that mentions anti-cheat. This is supposed to protect against review bombing or something like that. But, you know, d- deleting deleting a well upvoted review based on like an actual suspicion or based on actual issues. It's not a good look for Valve. Not even a little mm. bit, man. Not even a little bit. And you're thinking about this and you're like, wow. And I, I, I didn't, of course I had to go and type it in. Like, how do you become a moderator? <laughs> and you know, Valve has a very much the same policy I do about when it comes to being a moderator. Anybody who has to be a moderator will never get to be a moderator. That's not the person that you want, but you know, ter- the, Valve will just bless you at random and be like, hey, would you like to be a moderator? That's it. That's the application process. Mine. I was reading through the forum post, the recent ones from today, and it looks like Valve, as is tradition, has reversed the bands and they're starting to roll that out. And thank you, Slashdot, for getting some eyes on that because that made me think about this. Like, when you think by now, just possibly, just maybe, Valve would have something like a consumer ambassador role position or a team at valve um just a customer advocate position just that someone who could monitor this stuff and take care of the fire before it ends up on slashed up before it's on reddit before it's wherever blown up as is tradition a couple of days later when valve walks in and goes okay we'll fix it you know, something that would be proactive instead of reactive, because all we know to expect from Valve is reactive. This is mm-hmm. it's, it's a it's 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 an interesting point you bring that up because we were talking about that people makes games uh, documentary a while ago, and they were talking about how Valve has a lot of behavior like this, where like people like internal employees will come up with initiatives like this and be like, "Hey, we should create some sort of consumer advocacy," and then the 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 tribal council at Valve shoots it down because oh, this is not something we can fix with an engineering thing. Therefore, it's devalued, or it's going to take. It's not going to take uh, a short enough time to implement that it will impact people's bonuses. So I think some, something about the structure of Valve really, really would stop something like this, which is is totally necessary from ex- from existing. They have no reason to, or at least they they have no real drive or desire to. Well, and I mean, since it's, it's it always is necessary. Like, they get the community to do it for them. Mm-hmm. It is. You want a mechanism like this in place because Valve is not going to be on top forever. 
This is not like something will eventually give and you don't want to be scrambling. You know, you saw like we watched Valve scramble, or at least it appeared from our side of the mirror. Valve mm -hmm. scrambled to add all these features and stuff. When the Epic store started adding features and stuff, I was like, oh, oh we need to add all these other things. And I'm like, well, they updated their Steam chat to make it all Discordy now. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah, a bunch of stuff just came out at one time, and uh, like that uh, again, like that's reactionary. And I know somebody else was like, "No, we've been working that for nine years." And I'm like, they got greenlit all of a sudden, though, didn't it? Um, and it got <laughs> yeah, pushed out. Some someone was, and it kept getting deprioritized and deprioritized. Like, oh, we have one of these. Yeah, we need that now. We need that yesterday. Ugh. It's strange, man. Uh, but yeah, customer advocacy, you know, somebody just keep an eye on stuff like this. And I, I think Valve's way too big to do it, but you would to do a person to do it, but like a team to do that, just to peruse around and not volunteers. But I'm yeah, also, someone but, actually gets paid who has a, did an actual investment to do it right. And give them some power to fix this stuff, not where they send off a ticket to wherever and hope yeah. and like, hey, maybe it'll get fixed. But like, no, I got you. Don't worry yeah. about it. Uh, uh, they, 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 they should do that. I don't think like the, the, the soft power structure that's in place in valve will not allow that because that, that, that allows people with de facto authority to have to, that requires them to surrender that authority. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about some new games. Yeah. yeah. The one Pew -pew. new game that uh, actually looked very, very interesting and uh big, big thank you to the dev for sending us some keys. Thank you very much. Photon engineer. It's uh, it's out now. It's fifteen percent off. It is a well, it's a puzzle game where you have to get the uh, the laser pointers to hit the thing on the wall and allow you to it's make progress. principle. Yeah, effectively. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, uh, it, it, you, it's cell shaded talus principle. Yeah, you reroute the uh, the laser beams. You get it to the right place, and yeah, the it's yeah. <laughs> Uh, it is um, native Linux, obviously, and uh, thank you again for the keys. That's very much appreciated. Been looking forward to a new fancy puzzle game, and this looks to be interesting. The engine's open source as well. Uh, it's uh, C++ mm -hmm. and OpenGL based. Uh, That's what brought it to my GitHub. attention. I'm like, yeah. yeah, man, it's got a GitHub for this? Neat. I want to know, like, why is this got to be Jupiter? Yeah. Mm -hmm. like, the secrets of mysterious platforms that have just suddenly appeared near Jupiter. I think, I think it's a 2001 reference. I don't know, man. 1741 uh, latest releases out. I looked at it. It looks kind of like Portal a little bit. I'm getting those vibes from it. But yeah, it, Talos. It's, that, it's in that vein of, um, you know, Talos, Portal, and all that. But unless it's got like an overbearing, psychotic robot threatening to kill me and telling me all the ways it's going to dismember my ass, I, I don't know. <laughs> and telling you to lie down and assume the party going position? Yeah, there will be cake. I better get some cake out of it. Um, I, I don't know. Yeah, edgeless safety cubes. Yeah. Oh man, yeah, safety spheres. Yeah. And I, I don't. I don't know. The first time I heard edgeless safety cube, that shit like killed me. Like, <laughs> everything must be a cube. It is. Uh, game updates this week. Uh, I want to start out with a game that Jordan, you were like, wait, what? Yeah, uh, I, I was aware of like urban terror and stuff like that, but I, I had never heard about this one specifically. This is like a precursor to uh, Counter Strike, almost. And we talked about it before on the show. It might have been like a year or two ago. Uh, this is Action Quake, and version one point three is out. It's got a couple things to play around with it. Uh, the big one from this is it no longer requires Quake Two assets, so you didn't have to download Quake Two and like point it at the directory or anything like that. This is just straight out of the box. And it runs unless you're on Debian using X11. It don't launch unless you use Proton, which is kind of interesting. Especially when you click start, it gives you an option for X11 or Wayland. Like somebody put some thought into this. Hmm. I don't know. Like I thought about like maybe playing it in the after shows, and but uh, then I remembered, man, I just I I played too much of Quick Two in this era of shooters. <laughs> Uh, if it's not remastered mastered by Bethesda and Night Dive, I don't, I don't want to play it. Um, it's completely <laughs> free to play. It doesn't cost anything. What are the system requirements for Linux? Uh, an ARM CPU. Oh, run it on a Raspberry Pi, huh? All right. Or uh, ARM. Oh. <laughs> I suppose, I mean, it's the Quake 2 engine, even if it yeah. doesn't use the uh, official assets anymore. It, yeah, it should work on everything. <laughs> well, I, like, I wonder, does it ship with the ARM binary, like, on board? It's just like, yeah, yeah and all the Neverwinter Nights here. thing, and yeah, just 
put the <laughs> arm binary there? Yeah, there it is. Look at yeah, that. Make it arm 64. Ready Dope. to go. Dope, man. Run it, run it on Asahi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, it, it's Action Quake. It, between that and Warsaw, I think I played more Warsaw Sao, than anything. <laughs> Not the city, the, the game. Warsaw. Open source first person shooters. What have I played the most of? Uh, you mean, open arena. Yeah. Open yeah, arena. a little bit of. Yeah, I I always just like stuck with the OG ones, man. Like Quake Three and Quake Two and Doom. I I never got into like the what is it? Zenotic. Zenotic. Yeah. Bit, yeah. I think that Unvanquished. was it. Unvanquished. Uh, tried to play a little bit of that, but. Yeah, you tried, yeah, well, yeah tried Sa- and, uh, Urban Terror as well, <laughs> but never yep. stuck with them. Oh man, but speaking of uh, Wayland, uh, the internet's uh, game reviewer's new favorite benchmark. Yeah, well, I mean, so I've seen some of the mod shit with Factorio where you can get like factories inside factories inside factories mm-hmm. and just like bring your 16 core processor to its fucking knees. <laughs> but um, yeah, Fact- Factorio, it's a game where you uh, exploit and pillage the environment and build a spaceship. Uh, with advanced automation. Uh, it has a new version out, 1.8.0, or 1.1.80. Uh, and, neat thing, uh, it has Wayland support now, brought to you by SDL2. So, uh, SDL2, game developers, use it. It's great. It makes shit just work under Linux and, like, any platform, really. Also, there's a minor memory corruption on uh, bug on Linux that got fixed as well. So, you can go back to building your crazy factories and killing all the beasts on this planet and polluting just so much polluting <laughs> I it's think one it's of those games <sighs> requires a, sp- a special kind of uh, brain to enjoy and no, no. <laughs> uh, yes and I'm slightly I, I, above room temperature toast yeah I, 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 <laughs> I think there's I, like I can't <laughs> Yeah, the, the, there there are people who go hard into fucking Factorio, man. Oh, they do, yes. and like the game is priced. I mean, it's Steven Sausage Roll pricing. It's like thirty five bucks, but mm-hmm. they know it. But, they get a good game. I've I know about it because that is like they'll take really complex uh, Factorio things and they'll disable VSync and include those in like modern GPU metrics because this thing can hit hard. Yeah, with with all the with all like the little objects on the screen at once, yeah. with like all the animations. Yeah, it's for a two D game. There's there's a lot happening at one time. Mm. all right that's pretty neat uh what do we got oh one last little thing here one last little from our the fine fine lovely people at obsidian there's an update that involves steam or linux wait what (laughs) the deck specifically (laughs) steam deck support has been added to grounded and it's official too so uh, yeah. the game now boots, which is good. You can get into the game. That's neat. Uh, they've tuned the default gra- graphics settings for the Steam Deck. Nice. Virtual keyboard pops up. Also a bonus. And if you're like me, you're like, what the hell is grounded? A game from <laughs> 2022, the long, long ago, uh, from Xbox Game Studios. This was the, uh, yeah, they paid some Twitch streamers to play, and that was the first and last mm-hmm. I ever saw about it. Well, Multiplayer, yeah, uh, game what pass. is it, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids? Yeah, yeah, it's uh, Honey, I Shrunk Left for Dead. Okay, that'd be fun. <laughs> well, I thought that too. I'm like, why aren't we playing this? And I'm like, oh, it's forty bucks. <laughs> yeah, get out of here with that. <laughs> or it's ten bucks a month on Game Pass, you guys. Uh-huh. <laughs> Sponsor no. us, Microsoft. Yeah, there, there you go. You can get people to play at Microsoft. That's how you do it. I like, I, I try it out, but I'm not forty bucks new. No. No, not 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 that curious. Uh-uh. No, I, 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 admittedly, I like just about everything that Obsidian puts out. I tend to like. They are very much. Uh, they seem to develop games that I enjoy. Go figure. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, the bullet points that they put for the Steam Deck on the announcement. Yes, that you need to put that somewhere very very public for every game developer and whatever to look at and say no we you need to do exactly that get the um like the keyboard to automatically show up whenever someone selects a text field get rid of uh they don't have a launcher but they have the login screen about the xbox thing that is a little concern concerning but it's kind of inevitable when you're owned by daddy microsoft i suppose if i ever do play it i'll still have my 
Hotmail that I use for GitHub and Minecraft, so I can use that account. <laughs> I don't know. At the end of the day, uh, this is nothing but a good thing. I don't care who it comes from. Um, and for any game developer, any publishers, any studio sitting there thinking, man, like, why would I go through this trouble? Oh, that's real simple, baby. It's going to get eyes back on your game. Mm-hmm. Hey, you can that play is, it on the go. You know something Valve is interested in pro- like promoting, giving a little extra traction in the store? Things that are Steam Deck compatible. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm they even sure. put a little thing to uh, on the um, the Steam search. You can now uh, filter by the deck status, even on mm-hmm. the desktop version. So, yeah. You want to see that deck verified? <laughs> I'm looking at you, Avengers. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you know. It's let's, already let's playable. <laughs> dra- drag that game from 97 in, into the far, far future, man. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Coming up next, our national nightmare is over. The wait is done. You can finally buy a 4070. Ugh. The news are coming right up, but before we get to them, we need to throw some proverbial ketchup onto this soup that we've been cooking this whole time. Pedro, do you have a magnetic north? <laughs> do you have Do you have a magnetic tomato that you can make magnetic <laughs> ketchup out of? I, 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 I'm just going to say my charisma score is low enough that I, I don't have a magnetic a product anything. From LGC. <laughs> I, I Man, mean, wait, is, is, is your charisma score low enough that you are a magnetic tomato? Is dude, that it? Dude, there's people that make Sharknado are going to release like um, Magtato or something. Oh no, it's the new Metallica album, Death Magnetic Tomato. Death Magneto. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh man. Death Mag- See, Death Magneto sounds like it would be a cool X-Men themed album. Right. And it's yeah. like uh, evil Magneto or eviler Magneto. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Mag- Magneto's not evil. He's totally justified. And you know, we're not we're not getting into it. <laughs> Patreon.com slash links gamecast. If you want to listen to people talk about comics, you can go listen to Sandy's podcast. We're talking about Linux games right here. You can support this nonsense. Head on over to patreon.com slash Linux Gamecast. Get into our dis or get into our Discord by subbing to us on Patreon. You can also get into our dis war. Our dis war, yeah, you ninny. Uh you 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 smelly poo poo but uh, <laughs> yeah uh, pay, uh twitch.tv slash this gamecast you can sub to us as well get into our discord participate with all the stuff watch the pre pre super shows that we do at 7 30 on saturday it's an extra hour of mail server debugging and pr- complaining about programming but it might be the kind of thing you want to listen to we also got that live and uncut uh version that we post on youtube but i think you can get access to it in discord a little earlier are we still doing that wait uh live and uncut yeah uh you get that if you're a patron or yeah. yeah 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 okay cool yeah ma- 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 making sure i got that right um, there's the other yeah. youtube channel too <laughs> yeah uh we also do live streams i'm uh, doing strange brigade on thursdays you can join in ven is doing track mania on tuesdays and fridays get into our discord rsvp join play some video games with us you discord uh, show yes well I, we, I i gotta i gotta suck someone else's dick i gotta thank piper who's our newest patreon gotta thank you so uh how dare you. What, 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 whatever, whatever sex organ you do have, I'm gonna fillet it um, virtually. <laughs> uh, man, I'm digging myself a big hole. You we, are, gotta, man. we have a store, store.linksgamecast.com. <laughs> buy some shirts. You can buy some like socks to shove in my mouth to make me close my mouth. <laughs> T-shirts, uh, tote bags, stickers, coffee cups, good stuff. We got wish zones. We as need well. to, to sell a shovel so that Jordan can dig himself more I'm efficiently into think, that hole. Uh, I'm sitting here like, how many stickers? Well, what's the lethal dose on stickers? On sticker glue, it depends. I guess it depends on the adhesive, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or, I, I, or or like if if you cover the mouth and nose, then maybe just one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like uh, uh, two up each nostril. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we, we, uh, wish zones, go to linuxteamcast.com, put your mouse over the support button. You can buy us stuff that we want slash need slash just throw on there for a joke. You can send us a little message with the Amazon gift that we have to read for you on the air. Uh, yeah. If you buy Ven some stuff, you also get your name in lights is, is blinky blinky wall fixed or is that still busted? Hell no. All right. Well, it's fine. It, it doesn't blink. Blink. It's just on. <laughs> well, actually, Pandora, they're LED, so um, if you think about <laughs> yeah, it, they blink at sixty hertz. Uh, yes. uh, 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 uh. <laughs> Unless yeah, but, they're in the UK, at which point they blink at fifty. Because fuck you. <laughs> and if you want to, I'm actually either of these guys buy something off their wish list, send them a note, and then they have to read that on the air. It's good stuff. Mm-hmm. I do want to uh, thank uh, North uh, North Ranger North Ranger for the eleven month Twitch resub. All the stuff that we do. Um, bunch of cool stuff give it out 
or like access to a bunch of things, all the podcasts, and we come back bigger, better, and better, and sillier than we talk about things like, I don't know, really affordable NVIDIA GPUs. What a steal. That's I'll a take 12. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the one we've been waiting for this entire time, a $600 quit, sh- quit laughing, <laughs> quit, stop, $600 mid, no, uh, they're serious, at mid-range, it's here, we should be excited about it, the RTX 4070, look at it, it's the tower of, bl- I mean, power. <laughs> it's a tower of stuff you can't afford. That is literally ah. a car's worth of GPUs, all the performance of a 3070 Ti for the price of a 3070 Ti. Uh, $600 mid-range, if you haven't really got the cut of my jeb can eat a bag of dicks but uh what do you think about this jordan because like nvidia it really seems like they've managed to prevent like the aib partners from putting the 30 series cards on like, yeah. buy or sell right we, we we talked about this a while ago like nvidia has been definitely doing some stuff to limit overall stock to make sure that those prices remain artificially inflated so yeah, they've, they've, and I think they've been able to pull that off long enough that they can release a card like this and be like, hey, you want this for $600? And everyone's like, not really, but I guess we don't have a better option. Uh, you win, you win. Yeah. Uh, and here's another thing, like, where is the flood? It perplexes me, like how, what, what has taken place? Because all of those 30 series cards that we couldn't buy were sold. Where are they at? on the used market like that 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 tsunami of um reasonably priced previous generation cards has, has just not really missed that eh, words I, I got i got to imagine that all the crypto bros took those cards and are now using them to start their new ai venture that's my that's my guess i think jensen bought them all he did he like bought them all put them on his ship and suck it he's like yeah right <laughs> Oh yeah, there, there's just like there's like a like a cruise ship like sunk beneath the oceans that's just full of GPUs. Yeah, like you can just, ships, man. Yeah, you can just dive down there and get it, James Cameron style. I think you, we can all agree though. We can with this is uh, like uh, 12 gigs is kind of wicked low, but I mean this surprisingly has 12 gigs. This is how beaten down we are as a society, Batman. Um, 12 gigs is like well at least it's not eight. Yeah, and, right. Yeah. <laughs> For that 4060? Fuck. For the 4060. The only reason like that re- looks remotely, not even appetizing, but like, eh, it seems like reasonable when, when compared to the other off, uh, you know, the dark times, you know, the recent fuck you pricing that we've experienced on the high end, $500. This is what I'm thinking. 40, 70, 600 bucks. So logically just going by NVIDIA pricing, I think, what are the odds, Pedro? $500. For the 4060 Ti, it's going to be 8 gigs, and they're going to want $400, which they'll go, hey, that's $20 cheaper than the 3060, and then they're going to try to make it 6 gigs, just because, you know, hey. <laughs> I, I don't know if they're going to make it 6 gigs, they're probably going to go with 8 gigs for both of the 4060s, unless something else shows up that they can justify, like, the 12 gig 3060. Uh, but yeah, no, it's go- probably going to be 500 bucks for the, uh, the 4060 Ti or the 4060 if they end up not making a 4060 Ti, which, you know, that could very well be. But yeah, looking at the, all of the reviews that, uh, put up graphs for the 4070, the 6800 XD is looking pretty good, comparatively speaking. Yeah. You're getting any, anywhere from like, uh, 10% to 30% better rasterization performance. Of course, if you're talking about uh, ray tracing, it's not, yeah, it's not going to perform quite as well. But in but that's, rasterization that's, that's games. That's ray tracing in general, though. It's yeah. just not going to perform as well. <laughs> in rasterization games, the 6800 XT for about 500 bucks, it makes the 4070 not look that good in comparison. Yeah, I, I was gonna say, like in in Canada, like it's gonna be eight hundred. Like this is this is six hundred dollars US. That's about eight hundred ten Canadian. For that, you can yeah get a sixty eight hundred XT for with sixteen gigs for mm-hmm. like fifty to one hundred dollars less, depending on if you're if you're good with your timing. So like shit, this is this is not great in terms of you know pro, uh, pro consumer move. So what, what you're what you're really trying to say is uh, if you are not really into streaming or if you don't have to do anything that wouldn't leverage compute along those lines, if you're just strictly into gaming, playing your mm-hmm. video games, 1440p, 
hundred percent go with the uh, sixty eight hundred XT. It's just a better value. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, yeah, if you are into streaming and you need that CUDA support for compute, yeah, you're just going to be well, looking at Nvidia regardless. Well, you, you, you're, you're 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 stuck in that uh, you're stu you're you're stuck in that uh, garden anyways, right? Like, yeah. If mm -hmm. there, there there isn't really an alternative uh, to GP GPU, OpenCL is not that. Uh, you know, let's, let's say some of the nice things. Let's say nice things about NVIDIA. Uh, <laughs> credit or credits due. By all reports, this is it uses a just hardly no power at all. Which, which yeah. is good because they were causing some fires with their uh, with their power draw <laughs> earlier. The forty ninety reaching six hundred watts is a little bit much or, for a single GPU. <laughs> or lost lost arc just ca causing thirty eighty TIs to catch fire. Yeah, like. <laughs> But yeah. even like one thing you can compare against, like a lot of people were comparing this against like the 3080 Ti. I'm like, no, it's more like 3070 Ti. Really, if we're going to be real honest about it, uh, mm -hmm. talking about rasterization performance, um, yeah. then something like 40, 50 watts less. Like this mm -hmm. thing maxes out at like 200 watts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which it, it you could run it off of a single eight pin. <laughs> yeah. Does this thing use the eight pin though, or does it use the new? Uh, no, it uses the, the standard. Okay. Yeah, the the Nvidia Frontier, uh, not Frontier Edition, the Founders yes, Edition. The Frontier Edition. <laughs> Frontier Edition is the um, AMD ones. Um, uh, but yeah, the, the, they is. use the uh, twelve VH like Final Frontier. Yeah. So Connector. Something I, I like to bring up, I before we get off of this topic is, I, I brought this up a couple times. We are no longer Nvidia's market. We're not the customers. They're not aiming for me and you and Jordan and Pedro and everybody at home. Carmack really helped put this in perspective. <laughs> this, this is their customer base right now. The H100 GPUs are going for a little more than MSRP. They're going for $40,000 a pop on eBay. And you're like, oh no, that must be crazy, crazy scalping. No, no, not the MSRP for these guys are 35 thousand dollars and they are in such short supply i want to call this scalping maybe on technicality you get to call it Moderate scalping. scalping yeah <laughs> it, it's 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 still a scalp let's be real they're getting scalped on uh, like that nvidia can't keep enough of these in the supply channel thanks ai thanks thanks bard Thank, thanks crypto thanks just all all, all, all the super gpu intensive stuff that everyone needs to do now apparently for no uh, reason. so 4070 and 600 bucks like you know i've had this thing but that's like how much are you gonna hate yourself after you buy it that's where i'm at nvidia that's where i'm at like how much are you gonna hate yourself not if i'm like hmm. i i just want amd to release a fucking mid-range card already just like just that something be nice yeah i want they've been writing that 7900 yeah yeah, yeah. Ba ba XTX battle mage for a while ba battle <laughs> mage not sucking too i'll take that as well like dude Oh man, yeah, we need we we need something like and like to Nvidia's credit, like nothing can touch that forty ninety. That forty ninety is made out of like moon sauce and rabies, man. Like that, they can charge whatever they want for that one yeah. because it's yeah. the fastest. That one I get because that thing's just unhinged <laughs> in performance level and abilities to like pop power supplies. But when when you get to the seventies, because I'm I'm usually the sixties buyer. I'm like, eh, we just do that like every and, and get update every three years. You know, maybe. Yeah, I, I I usually go for the seventy series. Just like yeah, that's that's a once every three or four years purchase. You get like mm -hmm. a good, you, you it, it's like the the solid end of the price performance ratio. Yeah, you're not gonna it, it you're not like gonna be the hurting. Top of the mid range, it was the seventy series. Cool, yeah. And I mean, <laughs> top of the mid range, bottom of the upper range. Yeah, like yeah. yeah. We get the new NV encode. We get the AV one encode. So like then you get the DLSS three with frame generation. So if you're focused into all that, if that is like your entire package, if you're like me and you're like, I just want some like nice tasty compute, but I do want the AV one. Like so far, this has been the cheapest option, like realistically with uh that supports CUDA, which kind of locks me into that. I guess we're, uh, I, I don't think even the, four, if, if there's a 12 gig, I don't, okay. What am I trying to say? I don't think we'll get a 4060 TI 12 gig. No, they, they, they learned their lesson from last time. I think there, there's no um, crypto mining market anymore to justify that. <laughs> well, I think they lost a lot of business when they released the 3060 12 gig. Yeah. You know, the 12, <laughs> even their 90, 80, no, it was the 80 series cards that didn't have 12 gig on the 30 series, mm -hmm. right? It was like yeah, 10. Was, uh, 10. Eight. 
<laughs> so, uh, yeah, maybe they learned in an unfortunate way about that. But we got AMD, and they're rolling out with like 12 gig, 16 gig. And 20, 24 on their high ends. Yeah. Memory's not expensive. This is not like a very serious cost in your overall bill of materials. This is product. But, but, but you can charge for it, man. It's, it's Dude, not yeah. that premium. Well, it's like that. That's why I want to crush that. Like, no, memory's expensive. No, it's not. It's nowhere near. Like, you, you can tack out another four gigs. It's not going to really add much to the price of the card. So, who knows? Anyway, let's talk about <laughs> we're, enough of this NVIDIA stuff, Pedro. <laughs> 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 Remix. Enough of. Enough about NVIDIA. Let's talk about NVIDIA. Uh, when they announced the 40 series cards, you may remember that they also announced a couple of things like the LSS3 and Remix. And the thing that they announced with Remix that I saw that I immediately caught my attention was Morrowind. They decided to use Morrowind as a show off of what it could do. Basically, it uh, acts as an interposer between the GPU and the, the game instead of being just, okay, uh, this one uses Vulcan, then Vulcan talks to the GPU, and GPU puts it up on screen. Well, this sits somewhere in the middle and allows basically the Remix software to see everything that's happening in the game and allow you to replace things in real time with the help of ray tracing. And the big news here is that Remix is now the uh, SDK core is open source. You can go and grab it, do it yourself, and it does. <laughs> it only currently supports uh, DirectX eight and nine, so there's some limitations there. I kind of really want everyone uh, in the community once uh, they get a chance to to get this working on OpenMW with, you know, not Nvidia. <laughs> so Just let everyone else play with it too. <laughs> Yeah, so um, the uh, the one one neat thing is that it actually does use DXVK under the hood. If you look at the um, if you mm -hmm. look at the Git repo, it's like, oh yeah, here's one of the sub modules that we're uh, that we're utilizing. It uh, It doesn't hook into the game directly though. It hooks into your 3D editing software of choice uses using something called Omniverse, and then basically just gives you a bunch of uh, Nvidia AI black magic to play with. I'm not seeing the like, option in my Game Maker Studio. Where is that? <laughs> uh, they, they have support for like 3ds Max and uh, like Maya and a bunch of other ones. Uh, I'm not sure if they have Blender support in there. I didn't. I didn't see that. No. I didn't look. I didn't look super hard either. Well, you know what uh, might show up then. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. It's possible. <laughs> yeah. It probably. Yeah. But yeah, no. Th this this is really neat because it gives you a bunch of AI tools to like replace the assets and like fuck with the lighting and add all like the the ray tracing, path tracing, all that stuff. So it, it it's good for like recreating assets that you would need to you would need to in order to like create a RTX version of the game, I guess. Um, yeah, but it's, it's available now. You can check it out. Uh, oh, if they even have their own discord. Lovely. Yeah, of course. <laughs> now you might think, you know, but, and NVIDIA's trying, man, to like some extent, because everybody like drags out like open source drivers, they open source, split it open source now. Of them. NVIDIA, right? NVIDIA's get over 300 repos on GitHub for open source software. Think about that. Like. I'm the first person to throw NVIDIA, like, as we just finished throwing NVIDIA under the bus <laughs> for 10 minutes straight. Um, <laughs> but uh, it, everyone likes to uh, use that as a bit of a uh, club, but NVIDIA themselves have open sourced the uh, kernel modules. Not the actual drivers, but then again, neither has AMD. Shh. So <laughs> it's different somehow. You know what? I'll say this about NVIDIA as much static as I give NVIDIA. And again, for the like, listen, no love lost, kids. Um, they do treat Linux, uh, Linux desktop as a first class citizen, and they've done they, that. They, they, they got it. That's that's what all Pixar is using. That's what all these animations they do that. Are, well, yeah. they fix issues in Proton. They, they, they mm -hmm. do because because they, they realize, oh, if they uncover bugs in our OpenGL and Vulkan implementations and we fix them. That means that those bugs no longer exist. And there's one thing that I always bring up is um, the original Neverwinter Nights before Enhanced Edition. There was a bug with the Pascal GPUs in the first few drivers. And I went to the NVIDIA dev talk forums. I posted about the bug. It's like, can you get an API trace of that? I sent them the API trace. The very next driver release, it was fixed. Unlike AMD. That just well, closes bugs. It's like, won't fix it. Well, 
you. <laughs> Here's yeah, the that's thing, that's why you got to go to Valve for that. Right? Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> you got to go for the lovely people um, providing and maintaining the open source stack for AMD. Not AMD themselves. You go to AMD and be like, hey, man. They're like, yeah, are you installing this? You're running this particular version of this operating system, right? Like this particular mm-hmm. point release of Ubuntu. Why? Because it's not going to work if you don't. Yeah. And it, it, it's yeah. it's crazy too because <laughs> like of people, in, thank you, thank you very it, much. <laughs> it, it's so dumb too because like Nvidia drivers, they fucking run on everything, man. They like, do right, like they they put the work in, like for the past twenty years, man. Like that run file is going to run on pretty much anything you throw at it. Uh, the only thing with the Nvidia drivers is the need to kill the running graphical section. Oh yeah, uh, yeah session that's, that's two. Not, that's not great. That need seriously, Nvidia, find a way around that, please. That needs well, to not be a thing. Call me old anymore. fashioned. I was like, I got to reboot my computer. How many days does it take to reboot a go? Well, uh, 32 seconds. Oh, it's, no, mm, it's not about the rebooting. It's having to kill the currently running graphical session to install the fucking graphical drivers. Control Alt F1. <laughs> oh. no, uh, well, I mean, it, it doesn't do that anymore. Pseudo it used to freak out if you had the, um, it used to freak out if you had the uh, NVIDIA module loaded in memory. It would be like, yeah. oh, I can't, I can't install now this. You can you just need to be kill around level three. whatever I'm, desktop yeah. manager you happen to be running. Like, yeah, it's it's definitely, it's definitely getting better, but like, it I mean, we, we, we have, not we, be a thing. <laughs> we have GL NVD, which allows multiple open GL drivers to exist on a system concurrently. Why not? Why not? Anyways, <laughs> let's talk, let's talk about mangoes. Yeah. yeah, there's a there's a new version of Mango HUD out. It's that favorite overlay that you stick on your games to check all the performance stats out. They have uh some they have a new version out 0.69, very nice. Uh, it has uh, no borrow support now, so you Eggy fans, uh, you you can rejoice. There is a there is an actual uh, no borrow option in the install script. Also, uh, it'll properly detect your 64 uh, bit wine now, which is pretty neat. Wasn't doing that uh, before. Uh, some better AMD GPU metrics. Uh, some low uh, crashes latency. Fi- yep. Low latency uh, uh, frame uh, versus frame smoothing on the SPS smoothing. cap. Frame smoothing. 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 Thing. Smoot. <laughs> but yeah, no, it used to default to just doing the low latency one, which is good. It's very good. Uh, but yeah, some, now, some, uh, if, uh, if it's not, the latency is not you know, major concern for the game that you're playing, you can do the smooth one, which is really, really nice to see. <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, this is like something I always take a look at. I have this open more often than not to keep track of my frame smooching. <laughs> yeah, um, smooch, smooch. <laughs> there were a bunch of uh, OpenGL games using Zinc and some DXVK games that were crashing as well, so that's fixed as well. All, always nice when your monitoring software doesn't like actively fuck up your running application. It's kind of what, what you want it to do. Uh, what was one of the ones, uh, they added, uh, cause I made a note for it, uh, to do, do, do increase, oh, what is it? Mip map, negative, uh, positive values and blurriness. You can blur textures now. Like what's you going can, on there? Uh, disable linear, um, texture filtering, which instead of filtering the textures just presents the pixels. So it makes My everything favorite. look blocky. The, <laughs> best, oh, I, I, the biggest I, retro I didn't, I didn't. flag. I'm going to finish this. Brace yourselves. Disables linear texture filtering. Why? It makes the textures look blocky, yo. Uh, ap- apparently, uh, Amazon Games is added to the blacklist on here as well, as, as is GameScope. I Welcome guess. to your uh, bi-monthly reminder that Amazon has games. Yeah, some, <laughs> sometimes you can get good free games off Amazon. Sometimes. Not always. But. All right. So, uh, I think I speak with three of us. We know we're familiar what Minecraft is and all the Minecraft clones over the years, right? Mm-hmm. Speaking and of blockiness. <laughs> yeah, right. You like those uh, pretty pixel blocks and hover ships. I'm just seeing that. We're going to talk about mind test, and I always forget the one with the absolute dog shit community that says the other one has the dog shit community. <laughs> yeah, I think they're both called mind test, to be fair. I it's just that one has something else on the end. <laughs> one of them's got a fan club that just jumps in like with hate and vitriol. Like, how dare you talk about them? They are really the bad guys and fuck them all. And I'm like, wow, do you read what you're doing? Um, Version 5.7.0 is out, and the big one, the big focus on this one is the graphics and performance. And you two can enable it yourself with like these 17 easy steps. I, I just got like, what do we do? Bunch of stuff's in here. Uh, they fixed the crosshair in Android, and that's not all. Open GLS is now the default renderer. Bunch of things to reduce CPU, server, uh, CPU use, or the uh, 
culling. And one thing, it's flat pack. Huh. Huh. Boo. You can see the downloads page for more options. <laughs> they have other yeah, options. Yeah, you can Boo. build it from source. It's, it's C++. Boo. <laughs> you, you, you want that snap? Where, 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 where's that snap test? Uh, <laughs> you can get PPA. They got Debian Stable. It's Arch, Open Susie. Whatever the fuck this is. It, um, Majea. Uh, it's it's on most of this. Oh, I can read it, Pedro. I just don't know what the fuck it is. Um, is isn't, isn't that like Mandriva or something? That's like oh, the new. Uh, yes, it was uh, spawned from Mandriva, or replaced Mandriva, something like yeah. that. Hey guys, remember Mandra- Mandriva? Mandriva Linux, Mandrake? Mandrake. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Damn, blast Dude. from the past. I don't know. This is neat. I never. None of the mine. Craft or like maybe even looking because I know uh, I think Empty was talking about earlier last week or this week where Microsoft's finally forcing you to have a Microsoft account to play the Java edition. Yep, you got You got to merge your Minecraft and your uh, Hotmail accounts. So, I did that. A, I did that a while ago. It was pretty painless. Yeah, when they like, first did it, it's like okay, I'll just do it. Just get it over with again. Hotmail account. <laughs> yeah, but like also the I can count on like one hand the number of times I've logged into Minecraft in the past year. Or so Jordan, why didn't you ever get into Minecraft? Uh, you seem to be it, of the age. It had to have been like a huge so, thing when you were a teenager, right? Well, so I Minecraft beta came out in like 08, 09, and I did buy it then. I was in college at the time, mm. and I, re- I remember playing with some people. Like, I, I had some friends, and we would play Minecraft occasionally. But I think, like, it's it's one of those games where like you there is sort of like a survival mechanism, but you really kind of want to have a project in mind. You want to like accomplish something within Minecraft, and I never could find that thing. So it, yeah, it, I, it never was able to get its hooks in me because like I, I know in. like there, there are people who are like, oh, I'm going to build like a Game Boy emulator in Minecraft. Yeah. Or I'm going to like build CPUs Redstone. and stuff. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. you, you can use water and sand for it as well. Like, the, yeah, there are all sorts of neat stuff, but like, again, sort of dependent on like you have, you have a, you have something in mind, right? Like other, otherwise you're just kind of fucking around and experimenting. And I find that a little pointless. So. Well, I had something in mind. I logged in. It was a Java. I guess it still is Java. Mm-hmm. I did my best to draw a penis by digging it up. Went up on the mm-hmm. fucking cliff, looked at it, messed up a little bit, made some penis corrections. That was, that, that was my entire <laughs> Minecraft story. <laughs> In and out. Yep. Pedro. I, I, I guess I like, I like Minecraft for the exploration factor, especially when they started introducing like the randomly generated like abandoned mine shafts and the villages and everything else is like ooh okay now this is actually fun to explore and the dungeons and everything that that's when i played the most minecraft and then they added the ender dragon which if you defeat the ender dragon you get the roll the credits you've beaten minecraft yeah and that's when i stopped playing i had to take that off i I used I try to maintain a list to like screw with children when I'm talking to them. Minecraft is like, yeah, man, I play Minecraft. Yeah, I beat it. And then they added a way to beat it. You know, same way with like Fortnite. Like, yeah, I beat Fortnite, man. <laughs> well, the original Fortnite, um, not the Battle Royale one, it, you could beat it because it was a second player game. <laughs> I, I thought the only way to win Fortnite was not to play. It was like war games. Sure. No. All right. Well, coming up next, speaking of declaring war, uh, we're throwing chairs at Goblin and Coin, too. Yeah. Goblin War. <laughs> Welcome back. It's time. It's that time of the week where we take a game, we install it on several Linux distributions with some varying hardware, and then give you our feedback based on t- entirely on lawn chairs. One chair means that it's garbage. Four chairs means it's amazing. This week, we're taking a look at Goblin and Coins, too. By Nicola Bulge, I think Bull. I, I don't know how I'm pronouncing Bulge. this. <laughs> Bull, I, I'm I'm probably wrong. It's done on Game Maker Studio. You can pick it up for about five dollars US. What is it? Years have passed, decades maybe. Little Goblin moved on, but all but all all but forgot about the Great Coin Trouble, not even realizing that a new trouble is awaiting behind the doors. Just just the doors. Uh, gotta gotta light my fire, baby. Uh, we gotta thank uh, we gotta thank the devs for sending us some keys over at Curator Connect. I guess let's get into it then. Yeah. What what'd you, what'd you think about the goblin? I'm feeling Pedro's pain, baby. That's what's going on right now. Because oh. baby, it's got some issues. But all right, out of the box, it does launch. It's got that going for it. There's your check mark. Um, do you like 30 FPS? That's what this game's gonna give you. 
desync on off 30 FPS. Okay. I can live with that. What I can't live with, however, is there's no controller support under Linux. None. Doesn't happen. You want to play with the keyboard? I didn't. So that brings us to the fun part. Because I didn't play platformers with a keyboard on my Commodore 64, and I'm sure as fuck all not doing it in 2023, Brad. Not gonna happen. Because this falls right into the you had one job category, and you cock that right up. And I'm tempted to tell you, and there's my review, one chair, but I'm not. Because I tried playing this bad boy with a keyboard, and as Jordan's going to point out, up is jump. LOL, comma, no, period. Uh, Cracked open a copy of Proton. Behold, the X-Clone. Xbox One SX get tricky with a controller picked right up. And you know what? It's playable. Uh, You jump, you collect coins, you die due to this sloppy-ass platforming mechanics. If you're watching the video version, you can see Pedro just having a ball with him. Uh, The auto-grip absolutely frustrating and it straight up will miss inputs when you're trying to run and jump this just happens this is reality you gotta deal with and i know i know you're getting ready it's like why why are you doing this why are you playing this little game nobody's ever heard of we play these little games like this uh because discovery on steam it's hard man and you never know you never know like on the tin you look at something like um you know absolute gems like vampire survivors like a little one person indie developed game pixels and like like ah well, who'd want to play that it's like 90 cents you never know so yeah this is another retro pixel game made by a single developer and sometimes you get the vampire survivors but sometimes you get people learning how to do game dev in production and that's the case here with goblins and coins too so even at $4.99, uh, you, you can just keep cruising on this. You can keep cruising on this. Like, no no controller support. Stuck at 30 FPS. Like, nah, get out of here with that. Jordan? Yeah, so on Fedora 3764-bit with the R9 3900X and the GTX 1080 Ti, it does launch out of the box. And as Ben mentioned, controller support is completely bork. And as Strider mentioned, you might think, well, what if I use Steam Input? Yeah, it doesn't work either. I tried disabling Steam input as well. No picky uppy. Uh, you will have to remap the inputs via Steam input uh, to use the want to basically remap your keyboard presses to your controller. And even then, that's a little screwy because, as Ben mentioned, up is jump. And that okay. Let, let let's be real. We 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 live in current year. Up is not jump. We there's a fucking YouTube channel called Up is not jump that specifically discusses game design. Uh, yeah, stop it. Just, just, just stop it. Uh, also, what I, what I find hilarious is in the options menu, there is a button for disabling con- the controller uh, in case you have a steering wheel attached that is messing up your game. So I, I suppose this is meant to be played on a keyboard, sort of like a, a chip challenge type thing, like an old school uh, like DOS or Amiga platformer. Mm, yeah. the, I, I, Graphically, you got options for full screen and no, and V-Sync and no. The music is probably the least defensive part of this game. Yeah. Is it fun in a word? No. I don't share Pedro's complete disdain for platformers. Uh, he's going to get into why he hates those more. But it's not its not my favorite genre. It's certainly not my strongest suit, but I can appreciate a well-done one. And if you're going to make a pure platformer and charge five bucks for it, yeah, there's, there's nothing wrong for that. But the thing is, though, you actually have to make a good platformer at that point. The controls... They suck, as as Ven mentioned. They're not great. There's like missed inputs. You can't like run and jump at the same time. You have to stop and then jump because again, you're expected to press the up button to jump. Uh, and that that like really really distracts from whatever fun you could have here. Because like Mi- Miyamoto Shigeru Miyamoto, he figured out how to make a good platform back in 1985. He kind of nailed it. And if you regress from that at any point, like you're you're gonna have a bad time. And that's kind of it. This is just sort of bad Mario. There there are upgrades and stuff. You can buy extra lives. You can get a double jump. There's like puzzles and s- puzzles, quote unquote, to solve. But uh, but like that, that's that's kind of it. It's it's very, very minor stuff tacked on to a very, very poorly executed platformer. And like if you look at the devs page, because ostensibly there was a goblin in coin one, he says, well, I'm making games that no one else will really play. These are the type of games that I like. So, you know, may- maybe this is his cup of tea, but certainly not mine. One share. Over here on the Ryzen 7 5800X3D and the Radeon RX 6700XE, 
much like um, Venom Jordan already mentioned, logged at 30 FPS, did launch out of the box, uh, same on the Steam Deck, uh, but the controllers don't work. So you have to um, enable Steam input and set it to WAS mode for the game to be playable uh, with a controller or just use the keyboard. Um, the the background music sounds like the kind of music that I've created using the music editor in uh, APB Reloaded because they have a little music editor built into the game. And yeah, that that that's about on par with this. The graphics are fairly simple. Uh, it's a shame then that when I start moving, the background scrolling at 30 FPS is blurry as all hell. Uh, it's, fa it's fairly noticeable when you have a 144 hertz screen. Uh, yeah, it's... Um, I've said it many times, and I'll say it as many as I have to. I don't like platformers for the sake of platforming anymore. It's it, If you're going to sell me a platformer in current year argument, you better have some, uh, I don't know, a Hollow Knight, Assault and Sanctuary, blasphemous level of credentials, because that is when I'll pay attention to your game. Uh, it's... Uh, Platformers were all I played when I was a kid. Uh, I had a Master System 2. Uh, I played um, uh, Alex Kid in Wonderland over and over and over and over. I played a lot of that. And when I first started using Linux up until I got Neverwinter Nights working, 2D platformers were the bulk uh, of what I played. So, yeah. And clearly, you know, Goblin and Coins 2 is the second venture for this particular developer, and thank you very much for sending us keys completely unprovoked. We did not <laughs> ask the developer for keys. Uh, he decided to send, to send us some, so thank you. Thank you very much. But I don't like this genre anymore, and your game kind of keeps reminding me of why that is. Pair that with the broken controller support and the 30 FPS on a 144 hertz screen, and you get one chair. Yeah, oh, th this thing, right. I forgot about this. If you mm -hmm. lose all your lives, you can start the game over or you can go through this, like, gauntlet thing and, like, get out and, like, start from where you left off. That's yeah. not 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 a bad idea from, like, a gameplay perspective, but, like, so it's, 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 like, it's like your second chance. Pedro, would you, yeah. would you have a different feeling if it was 31 hertz? <laughs> I'm sure if I had the deck set to, like, 30, uh, 30 hertz refresh, it would probably look smoother, but mm -hmm. I usually have it at 40, and it does not look smooth at all, even at 40. It doesn't so. look smooth at 60 either. Yeah, yeah. And, and again, like, <laughs> the, like e not even contemporaries, but you get stuff like, uh, e like pure platformers like Meat Boy that, like, throw this out of the water. Hell, even, uh, what, the, the one that the guy made for his daughter, that had, that had, like, probably better platforming mechanics than this. Oh, yes. It, the, it, uh, Princess, Princess, Princess Ruby. Ruby. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, hey, man, you got to start somewhere, and like, there is a certain yep. price to doing game dev and production. So, indeed. All right, so. uh, hang on. Boop, boop. There. Ha. Aha! We made it. <laughs> That'll do it. Coming up next. How how do I game scope? I I don't know. All the things. It's over. We're done this week. Don't worry. We'll be back. There will be more. Uh, Meteor we're time. <laughs> We're like a bad rash. She can't get rid of us that easy. So much. You can apply some cream. I would watch Meteor Time. <laughs> Ep epic Meteor Time. Epic Meteor Time. Uh, yeah, no. Um, like, would, would, okay. Like, you know where they always have that? Uh, they do the, like, the TV shows, like different planets or like TV yeah. shows to like the big aliens. Like, what if, what if there was that channel of like just watch other civilizations deal with the giant meteor? Yeah. <laughs> like reality TV is just yeah. watching <laughs> meteors it, it, hitting planets and group. Is, hold on, isn't that just straight up, show me what you got? Pretty much. Yeah. Meteor. <laughs> but yeah, uh, if you'd like to let us know which civilization you'd like to see wiped, uh, hi NSA, uh, via Meteor Strike, you can go to LinuxGameCast.com, hit what the contact for button. a job? <laughs> and uh, it, there's a little uh, form you gotta fill at the bottom, LGC Weekly is the topic you wanna pick, uh, or send some feedback for uh, Ven and Jill on the... Um, the Wednesday show, LWDW. There's some caveats at the top. You might want to read those. If mm -hmm. you don't, reading well, that's hard, on Pedro. you. <laughs> reading is difficult, and uh, some people will just power through it, no matter how explainy you try to get with them. Like, so, so you're gonna write an article? <laughs> you contacted me about coming on the podcast. <laughs> 
So you might know, or maybe you don't know, and that could be for better or for worse. I did a little video a couple of weeks ago. Was it like more than a couple of weeks ago? It's like a month ago now. Yeah, a month know. ago. Yeah. It's hard to keep track of time. Uh, this was just called, you know, hey, Gamescope with NVIDIA. Shit works now. And play with it. March 10th? Yeah, yeah that's, that's a month yeah. ago. Okay. So that was a while ago. And somebody wrote back and like, hey, you know, I got some questions about this Gamescope stuff. And uh, it was uh, Lynn Oxyard. Yeah. Right. Uh, I got it. Yeah. I got it. It's been a while since I've read one. Cool. Um, what GPU and backend do you use? Question mark. So what do we, uh, well, we can deconstruct this, but what do you think? That's my first question. Like, what do you mean by back end? I'm guessing X or Wayland. Oh, judging by what he says, I immediately afterwards. <laughs> Coming up next, I have random issues on Fedora GNOME with a 1080 Ti. Ah, Jordan knows about those. Uh, yeah, and, I do. Uh, and an Alexa, Alexa Seven uh, X Eleven <laughs> session. Alexa Seven from Amazon. Gamescope does not start or starts, but the window is broken. I have to kill it and retry, sometimes multiple times, to get it to work. I also tried to start it in Wayland session, but it would just refuse to start. Uh, yes, out of, uh, out that, of that, anger. that happens on 1080 Ti and Wayland. That that that'll that'll do it sometimes. Yeah, so I've I've actually run into something similar on uh, Fedora 38 with uh, with uh, X11. Uh, it happens every once in a while where like it started happening more with uh, Strange Brigade where. Uh, it has like that little window that pops up where it's like, oh, do you want DX12 or Vulcan? And if you click anything outside of that, uh, by the way, Stranger Brigade, um, I need to run it in game scope to get it in a windowed mode because it only likes to do full screen and like tiny window does that annoying shit. Um, but yeah, if you if you touch anywhere with your like your mouse before the, the dialogue window spawns, it just crashes. Mm. So some, some, yeah. So sometimes, sometimes it's a little finicky and you just like click play again and you don't touch anything and the window pops up and the game starts fine. And then you never have an issue with it. So yeah, there's still, there's still some like minor, minor stuff, but like I've, I've, I've never had like the window straight up be broken. That, that one, that one, uh, that one is new. I guess it would also depend on like the game, right? Well, mm -hmm. if you don't put the, um, no DRI, you got to do the mode set. And yeah, the, yeah. Um, yeah. If you don't put that in your grub config. You will get sound and the game will play, but you will never get window. Mm. You'll, you'll, you're like, what the hell's going on? <laughs> oh, right. I didn't follow the instructions. But these are just our examples from Big Evil Team Green. Everything's perfectly functional on Team Red, though, isn't it, Pedro? No. Oh. <laughs> uh, game scope, it's great. Uh, when it works, it's absolutely amazing. But there are games that it just straight up doesn't work with, um, which doesn't seem to be the case because uh, Linux Yard does say that... Um, Sometimes it works uh, in X, so uh, yeah, probably not the case. But I did find one. Uh, what was it? Four by four Evo two. One of the games that I managed to get working in um, Lutris uh, on Friday. If I wanted to do um, any kind of game scope, it would just sec fault immediately as soon as it started. So yeah. Some games it just won't work. Uh, I I've had some weirdness with it not starting properly with Elden Ring. It sometimes the window pops up, sometimes it doesn't. Steam claims that the game is running, but there's no window, there's no sound, there's no nothing. It's just in limbo. So I mean, here's what you should do if you do have a problem with that. Uh, post on post an issue. And something yeah. I do want to mention, um, you know. <laughs> Uh, Gamescope is now officially on the Valve software Git repo, not Loopy's um, personal okay. GitHub. That's good. So that's been updated. Yeah. If, if you've been looking for it, you're like, where did it go? That's where it go. And you, you, you mean you don't just Google? You don't just Google Gamescope GitHub and then click on the first <laughs> link. <laughs> considering the the deck makes heavy, heavy use of Gamescope, it's probably a good idea. Yeah, yeah. it's probably a good idea. <laughs> Maybe try it out. I mean, if it doesn't work, just revert back to the. You know, I. Usually, only break out game scope currently in current year, as Jordan would say, uh, when I have a problem with a game. Like, it's not obeying me. I can't get it in a window or I can't get it full screen or, or something or, else. Or, yeah, so it, it doesn't give you the resolution option you want or whatever. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So you can get and, FSR. <laughs> I mean, and, and I mean, like, if you're playing on the Steam Deck, then yeah, you're fucking using it all the time. It's great. Yep. It, lets mm -hmm. you do, it lets you do all, like, the at runtime tweak, like, tweaks like changing the the refresh rate and all that crap. That would be so dope, Valve, if you would just include that with Steam. Let me click a checkbox. 
Yeah, it would be. Yeah, it would just be make it a dependency. They, just just yeah. so that I, people, I will, if they want to, they can have that. Yeah. I, will, I wonder <laughs> if you could like integrate it into the overlay, where the overlay launches as game scope, and then like. Yeah, like I, I don't know. You, you could you could do something with it. There, there needs to be you a checkbox sp- that just says "Obey me" mode. You click that, <laughs> and you select windowed full screen resolution and FSR. That Valve is full of talented software developers who can solve this problem, and I don't yes. need to because they're not paying me. Fine. <laughs> Obey me mode checkbox. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for this episode of Linux Gamecast Weekly. Thanks for showing up, hanging out with us. If you want to get in touch with me the rest of the week, I'm hanging out on our Discord. That's like our Slack. It's a interesting collection of human beings. It's a real nice crew. If you're looking for that built-in, like people are going to talk about Linux and pretty much everything else you can think of, man. It gets weird sometimes, but it's always fun. It's always entertaining. At Vinstone on Twitter. At Vin on our federated timeline, mass.linuxgamecast.com. And uh, yeah, you just add Vin in IRC or Twitch chat and it'll pop up because we got the bridge thing. Yeah. I'm Jordan. And if you agree that Valve should give me money, <laughs> head on over to Twitter and tell them that at the burning fool on Twitter or um, at Frojo at mass.linuxgamecast.com deserves a bunch of Valve money for no reason. Yeah. 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 I won't even ask for money. It just. Continue what you've been doing with the AMD Rad V and everything else drivers, and we're good. I, I, will, I will take the money. If, if, you, <laughs> if you don't have to give the money, I will take Pedro's money, but you can keep doing that too. Yeah. Uh, so if you are going to give us money, you can give my cut to Jordan. That's fine. It's at an accounted for on Twitter if you'd like to um, call me an idiot. That's fine. You wouldn't be the first, then something tells me you will not be the last. Time for some credits. <laughs> Mm. Wrong button. Aha! Uh-huh. <laughs> it's the start of the show. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a time loop, man. We can't escape. Time is a flat circle, motherfuckers. There we go, Groundhog Show, Groundhog yeah. Podcast, yeah. every day. Lin- Linux game, gr- Linux Groundhog Upcast. We gotta thank our advisors, Omegas, Arthurin, and we gotta thank our executive producers coming out of the black. They are Barb Ram, Scott Michaud, Atomic Ass, Mike G, Drummer, Kohaku Pebble, Tomaj Hakim, and David and our Chicago, Chicago kicks ass. Superdestos, empty, glorious egg roll, and blast of a mama. Mia. Blast of a mama. Sea monsters. Sea monsters. Renault, Rider X, Machina, Traji, Veritan, Nuda, Justin, Nubbin, Darkwing, System T, Danzing Joe, Ogi One, Kyrillo, and Fute. Pedro's old boss. Yeah. Nova, Chris, <laughs> Steven, Jill, Xanthorus, Dodger, Jill. Gametron, Wolf Horson, Xanthorus Gaming, Dodger, <laughs> Swine, Ooh, and Stinky Dev. We got the chairlings, too. I yeah, got well, Giovanni, Piper, Joanna, Kronk Delonka, <laughs> Paulo, Brock, AJ, Craig, Chris C, Simcha, Steven, Enmag, Colin, Dordogorgi, Deke. The Dordogorgi. I can't even say it anymore. <laughs> Massaboni, Chris yeah, G, cool. Michael W. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Back. For you everybody who's picked up stuff for our studio over the years, Carl, Mike, our theory and Linux new world is Nicholas, Jean, Eshop, Gametron, you know it, DS and Joe, and Aromatic. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll say your name, Beastwick. Why not? You get you get, you get get a shout out at the oh, end. Yeah, man. <laughs> Proper shout out because you said something. He will. Uh, <laughs> that's and he's, he is the only one. If anyone else asks, they're getting banned. No, I'm looking at the show tonight and Jordan's like, never say list. Like, damn. Um. <laughs> Why you gotta be like that, bro? Never. Bad fire, everyone. <laughs> we'll see you next week. Five dudes. <laughs>